All right, what's going on guys? Try back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing part two or the review for episode 16 of Fear of the Walking Dead season three. This is the final episode for the season. This is for the season finale. And this one is called Slay Ride. So spoiler warning if you guys have not seen this episode yet. I did my review just before this one for episode 15, which is Things Bad Begun, uh, where we had a pretty huge character death in uh, in that one. I wanted to split them up because the episodes are just so loaded. Um, but at the end of this video, I'll have a, a link to uh, episode 15. So if you guys didn't see that review, you can watch it after uh, this one because it's got my thoughts on spoiler warning, the uh, major death, which was uh, Troy in episode uh, 15. Just crazy you know crazy stuff for sure so check out that review if you want to hear my thoughts on that so episode 16 so this is the final episode for fear like i was saying in episode 15 review um you know just to kind of bring you up to speed if, if you haven't seen that one this season is nuts i mean this this is a crazy season and this finale i mean was one of the most epic things i think i've seen in in the zombie apocalypse it's almost like fear sometimes is kind of redefining walking dead in its own way and uh you know if you want to talk like season finale you can't get much more explosive or big time than what they do in this episode where they blow up the entire freaking dam i mean that's like something you want to see in like a movie or something like that for a zombie apocalypse. It just felt so damn epic. There were so many cool things about it. There was just so much happening uh, for our characters. You have Nick who basically is pretty much committing suicide at that point. Uh, there are some lines here and there I felt like were a bit. Sometimes people criticize fear of having a bit pretentious uh, writings or dialogue between, you know, like like the way they talk is not nat feels unnatural sometimes. And I do have to agree with that sometimes. Maybe fear sometimes tries to be a little bit too smart or at least the way the characters communicate is a little bit too uh, meta or it's a little bit too kind of uh, scripted than it should be uh, for it to feel maybe as real as it is but the whole suicide note idea for him and this is this is my suicide note that kind of thing that kind of brought up but it was it was still um, really epic really exciting and uh, quite the gun battle so we see Tons of character deaths this episode. You get basically, uh, starting. let's start things off scene by scene. You've got uh, the Madison family Christmas. So we have these scenes taking place in the present. And then we have kind of this uh, family Christmas thing going on, which at first I didn't like. At first I was like, this feels out of place. This doesn't seem like it fits right. It doesn't make sense to me. It's kind of weird to see Strand and the others kind of coming in. You see characters that have been killed off already kind of having dinner. And I got this vibe or this sense, like, what is this, like Walking Dead light or something? You know what I mean? Because they did kind of the dinner thing uh, in The Walking Dead Season 7, and I just don't want to see things be that similar between the two. Even though I like to see parallels, I don't like to see things that are exactly, you know, feel like they're just there. Now, they did set it up with the mention of Christmas and that kind of thing before, and that's, I guess, Madison's favorite thing of the year is to kind of, you know, have the turkey, that kind of thing, uh, tradition, have the whole family come together, that that type of deal. So they, they went with it, and they did it. You know, it was... Um, Aside from it coming off a little bit as Walking Dead light, it, you know, in the end, when you see the final scene, it really makes a lot of sense that she's having this kind of hallucination, these hallucinations and these things going on. Uh, because, of course, she's been, you know, plunged, maybe hit her head or something, plunged under the uh, the water. And, uh, you know, a favorite part of the episode for sure has to be when, you know, Cliff Curtis returns as Travis to pull her up. That was a really cool return. I was really happy with that. Much better to see him return in a, a positive note than some people have speculated maybe we could see him as like a half zombie or something. Something like half body zombie. Uh, I, you know, I prefer this one a lot more. I thought this was really a really nice way to tie the season in. And even though maybe it does feel a little bit like Walking Dead season seven, the way they kind of do the dinner thing and then they kind of, you know, tie it at the ends with Abraham. It, it maybe it worked even better in, in this with regards to the tie-in to see Travis kind of be the one to kind of pull her up and. Um, you know, the, the whole water idea that it would make sense that she might be hallucinating once you figure out that, oh, okay, this is what's going on and she's, you know, submerged and everything, which makes a lot of sense because, you know, as you got to go down, if you're knocked out and all your senses are kind of blurred and everything, you might start, your brain might be going and you might go into some kind of hallucinatory dream state. So at first, halfway through the episode, I didn't like it. I thought this was really weird. But then by the end of the episode, it's like, oh, that's what they're doing. Now it makes perfect sense. And I actually loved it at the end when you see, you know, that she's underwater and it all kind of clicks and makes sense. Okay that's why we're seeing that it makes a lot of sense now and i thought that was uh, it was a really nice touch to kind of cap the season off to see him there and uh, just to kind of just everything they did with that i thought in the end worked out really good even though maybe in the middle it felt like a bit much um 
So you have kind of those sequences going on with Madison, and then you have all the other stuff that's been happening in the episode, which is crazy. You have Daniel kind of half recovers here. You know, he sees that Lola's dead. Lola finds out that Ephraim is dead. So basically, the whole damn community is basically dead. They've pretty much all been executed or, or killed, except for uh, Daniel at this point, who, who's still alive. But again, you know, as of the end of the season, we really don't know. The characters are all in disarray. We don't know who's going to make it out, who's not. We don't know who's going to survive. You know, this, this this crazy stuff that's going on. Uh, Nick doesn't seem to want to care to get out of there, but then Daniel kind of comes up. So we're going to have to see, you know, who survives. I would assume we'll do predictions after this video that probably you'll have Nick get out of this one alive, you know, most likely. Um, Daniel will probably find a way to survive again, I would think, because they just don't, like, you know, we've been talking about how few characters Fear has. <laughs> you, know, you look at this one, they kill off a whole bunch of others. It's like, well, damn it, are we back to, you know, like, it feels like we have less characters now than we did at the beginning of the season. It, it feels really slim. So, you know, I've been saying it for a while, but they can't keep killing more people off. I mean, they don't have that many people left to work with. Um, but they did have Taka survive the season. They did have Crazy Dog survive, so that's kind of cool. They're heading north, so we'll see what happens with that. There was a mention of Texas, which is kind of cool. Some people's theory about maybe an Abraham, uh, you know, crossover character type of deal, maybe. So we'll see if anything kind of comes of that with Proctor John and his men of that and wanting to kind of take Alicia with him there so we'll see but you know of course it does look like they're kind of going to get away uh, Strand, Alicia and Madison but we'll have to see but it was a pretty good setup double finale for a new villain with uh, Proctor John as well too. So of course we have in the episode uh, because the dam was able to find out as a result of Troy and Nicholas uh, kind of finding out that they were going to be attacked telling the others um, and basically, Stram wasn't able to get everything just the way that he kind of wanted it to be. So then you have, um, you know, them kind of coming in and just shooting. You get some pretty good shoot 'em up sequences as we go through back and forth. Probably my favorite one would be uh, Daniel when he's acting like he's acting like he's there, and then he, he kills the guys that are there. Especially the shot before he walks up the uh, stairs. Though. That was pretty cool. And um, so you see that you have him on the bridge. You have Crazy Dog on the bridge. So some really good action sequences all throughout. Uh, some really crazy stuff. Let's go through. So let's look at, uh, so what kind of fresh hell is this? That was cool. Um, then we have, so, you know, one thing about John's group I almost want to feel like is maybe they feel like they're almost too evil or they're too like 100%, like there's no give, you know, with Proctor John. It's kind of like, you kind of get the idea, but then at the same time, he talks about like having spent some time in Buddhism, this kind of thing, you know. <laughs> so I, you know, again, this kind of gets to me. It's like a little bit, a little bit weird to me, where it's like, uh, you know, he finds out that because uh, Nick tells him that um, Madison had killed the other, uh, killed Troy. Um, you know, it's just kind of weird to me. It's like, okay, well, we're just going to kill everybody. You know, is basically what uh, is, is the way to handle this. So it's um, it, it's kind of tricky. It just kind of feels like. I don't know if anybody, hmm, can I say I don't know if anybody's that evil? I mean, I guess, of course, there would be, but it just kind of feels like to me that, you know, okay, so you're just going to kill, like, they're not really a threat to you at that point. You could just let them all go and that'd be fine, but what are your motivations? Because the thing is, Alicia did help him, and even though things didn't go the way, you know, they were supposed to go with Strand, you know, there's going to be blood if you go to take something over by force either way, even if there's some kind of coup or, you know, somebody lets you in. Still, there's going to be blood both ways. So I kind of feel like with that, it's, um, hmm... It's a bit tricky, and there's also, of course, the part with the uh, the scene on the bridge where he's got the detonator, and they don't want him to detonate it, but then after a while, I did like that uh, Proctor John got bored and just told, okay, just kill him, whatever. <laughs> I'm bored of this. I can't deal with this anymore. Just kill him, whatever. And I would have almost thought that he would have done it sooner, but, you know, it worked out to, to be... Uh, to be okay. So we've got Nick with the family. We've got, uh, you know, uh, my mom killed him or, or she killed him um, to John. So then uh, John kind of likes it, but at the same time, you know, afterwards he doesn't because uh, he's going to basically, uh, you know, do that. You've got Nick who seemingly gives the kiss of death to Strand, I, I would want to say, uh, and kind of takes the uh, takes the detonator from him, right? So we've got that. So don't touch the other button, right? Because Strand doesn't want him to destroy the entire thing as because he wants to kind of run it. But at that point, even, see, there's so much back and forth, right? It's kind of like, you know, is John going to let him? He doesn't trust him. He's a liar, so he's not going to. So he kind of used him. Oh man, it's kind of it's kind of kind of crazy. Like just all the things happening. I'm trying to recap all this, and I'm going through this like, what the hell, you know? Um, 
So we got that. You know, you've got the shots from the others, like I said, uh, from Taka and Crazy Dog. You've got a really exciting sequence. They're allowed to leave because uh, Nick's got the detonator. And um, we have, like, all the grave scene and the hallucination and the trap stuff with the water. And then the rich gets blown up. And, you know, it's crazy. just crazy shit, man. It's, it's like, I'm having trouble just recapping all this. So, okay. So goods and bad, positive and negative. So a positive note for this fear finale. Certainly, you can't complain that nothing happened. <laughs> you know, you can't like you can't objectively do that. They did a lot of stuff in this finale. Maybe you could complain that some of the dialogue was a little bit too over the top and it didn't feel natural. But at the same time, I mean, they you know they did some crazy shit in this finale. The hallucination stuff was in the end, I think, was really good. Uh, even if maybe it wasn't 100 percent on point all the way through, it was exciting. It was interesting to see what you know what would happen with Nick on the bridge. There it was an exciting. It did feel epic. You know, it did feel like kind of an epic conclusion or an epic finale to the season. And I do think that's what you want because we saw some crazy stuff this season. We saw a zombie herd come through, but maybe something we haven't seen is, you know, in regular Walking Dead is something like this where, you you know, you you know explode an entire dam, right? It's pretty crazy, man. Just give the water to the people, so to speak. So, I, you know, I did like it. I liked the double finale a lot. Don't know how I feel about the deaths in 15, like I talked about earlier. But, you know, if if nothing else, they're, you know, it's, it's it kind of feels like they're throwing everything at the wall, seeing what's going to stick, seeing what's going to work at this point for fear. They went all out this season. Season three, Dave Erickson's last season as showrunner for the show. They went all out. You know, they threw everything, including the kitchen sink, you know, exploded kitchen sink in lots of pieces because the dam was exploding at us. And, uh, you know, I appreciate it. You know, if maybe sometimes you feel like, okay, the pacing's too fast or things are going too quickly. Proctor John just had this happen. He shouldn't be up walking around. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, you know I'm not going to say that it doesn't make sense. You know, so there's things you can look at if you want to nitpick and, and say that doesn't make sense or this doesn't make sense or this dialogue doesn't sound right or that dialogue doesn't doesn't sound right uh, or it's too much like walking dead with the uh, the dinner scene and what have you um, but really i mean it feels like they're going for it feels like they're giving us everything they possibly can they're going after it and i would just say that this is basically and i said like the perfect kind of season finale that you want maybe i won't say perfect but it was a great season finale it was a great cap off to a super death heavy season it really feels like dave erickson kind of gave it his all to finish off his time on fear Ended season three on a crazy, you know, high note, I want to say, and a very exciting note where they did some things that, uh, you know, and you think about a zombie apocalypse, right? You know, sometimes people would just lose their mind and blow the whole goddamn place up. And I felt like as a viewer that that made sense as well, too, because you're sitting here, you're going through it with them. And it's kind of just blow the goddamn thing up already. And then he does it. And it's like, <laughs> I don't have a problem with him doing it. Because I probably would have done it too at this point. Because you see people dying all the time. You know, this guy is trying to kill you now, and he doesn't care. And he's like, oh, I'm just, I'm bored, whatever. Whatever you're going to do, just do it. I'm leaving anyway. I don't give a shit. So, you know, it's just like, it, it was just crazy. And, it, you know, I, I do feel like maybe in some ways fear has kind of redefined Walking Dead. And it's really changed the game, I think, with this, uh, this kind of season. Um, just chaos you know with with a zombie apocalypse like like that's maybe what it should be like it should be like chaos you know you should have all these people all around at the beginning and you know because zombies haven't fully killed off everybody yet you should have these small groups go up and then try to attack others and these other locations fall and locations and locations just fall and fall and fall just because all this crazy shit's going on and it feels like that with fear. So a really epic finale, an ambitious season where they tried to do a lot of things throughout. And I really appreciated it. Maybe I will do a season review for Fear of the Walking Dead Season 3. I just have to think a bit on it of, you know, where I would place this season versus the original Walking Dead series. Like what season in Walking Dead is, you know, most kind of close to this season? Because it's just such an insane season of fear. And I'm going to give the final episode a 9.8 out of 10. They tried to do a lot. Maybe there's some things here and there, but it was just very ambitious and it was big, you know, and that's kind of what, that's kind of what I want to see for fear. I want to see this. I want to see, you know, some big things happening. I want to see dams being blown up and <laughs> ranches being trampled over and, you know, that's great, you know, and they're just basically surviving is what they're doing. They're just trying to make it. They're just trying to get by. And that's what a zombie apocalypse would probably be like for the first year or two 
while you have most of the of the population being reduced further and further. Uh, the ones that are alive right now, you know, they're not the ones that are going to survive in the longest, a lot of them, but they're people that right now, they're like, you know, just trying to get by, just trying to survive, trying to get theirs. Some people are going after power positions right away with the dam and, you know, locations trying to get those um, before... You know, someone else who's stronger than him gets it, this kind of thing, and, uh, you know, expand their power quickly, you know, and uh, sometimes it would backfire, sometimes it wouldn't go right. So, um, yeah, man, I mean, I enjoy the hell of the finale. What a season of fear. Uh, in the end, you know, I definitely am not disappointed at all. I'm glad I stuck with the show. I'm glad those of you guys who are still here stuck with it gave it a chance. And, uh, yeah, write your console. Let me know how you guys feel about this because there's certainly some interesting stuff with episode 15 and that. And, uh, man, just what a crazy all-around finale and crazy season for sure. So if you guys like this video, please don't forget to thumb it up below. You can also share, you can favorite. And if you're new and you want to subscribe, you can do so at the bottom. That's it for this one. Check out the 15 review if you haven't seen it. And I'll be back in about an hour for my predictions for Fear of the Walking Dead Season 4. It feels weird to say it, Season 4. So I gotta get used to that. So for this one, see you guys again soon for that uh, season four video for fears. Trev, I'm saying peace. Later, guys. See you soon.